You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 17th of April and I'm Roland from Milford. The key economic news last week was the US inflation data, which came in at 5% year-on-year, slightly softer than the 5.2% expected. Core inflation, however, came in bang in line with consensus at 5.6% for the year, or 0.4% month-on-month. This monthly inflation print annualizes at 4.8%, which is still well ahead of the Fed's target range. US PPI was also released, which came in well below expectations, actually falling 0.5% month-on-month. This is the price received by domestic producers of goods and services, so generally leads headline inflation metrics. Retail sales were released in the US, which fell by 1% month to month, more than the 0.4% expected, as consumption continues to normalise. The FOMC minutes were released, and there wasn't much surprising in them. However, they did highlight a 50 basis point increase was considered by the US Fed, but the issues in the banking sector held them back. Also, some staff members had forecast a mild recession later on in this calendar year. Domestically, Australian employment data came in much stronger, with total employment growing 53,000 versus 20,000 expected, and the unemployment rate remaining flat at 3.5% versus 3.6% forecast. The participation rate continues to hover around record levels and increase slightly month to month to 66.7%. Interestingly, the working age population increased by 2.3% year-on-year. This is well above the natural rate of population growth, and although may still be recovering from COVID, it also likely reflects the significant step-up in immigration. On this note, Australian arrivals and departures data was released, and although it doesn't perfectly track actual net migration, it is a guide. It came in very strong as the recovery in travel and immigration continues, and points to potential record migration levels should current trends continue. Another key development in Australia was the potential thawing of relations with China, as China is now reviewing the tariffs imposed on Australian barley. As a reminder, this tariff is 80% and was implemented in 2020. There is hope that this will open the discussion around the current wine tariffs, which can be as much as 200%. Turning to equity news, West Farmers sold their final stake in Coles with $688 million. This was done at a very tight discount of only 0.6%. Newmont, the global giant gold miner, made a revised bid for Australian listed gold miner Newcrest. The prior bid would see Newcrest shareholders receive 0.38 Newmont shares for every one Newcrest share. They increased this ratio to 0.4 and said that allow a franked share of US $1.10 to be paid prior to deal implementation. This is the second time they've sweetened the deal. Given the takeover is tied to the share price of Newmont, the deal value is moving around. As of close of Friday, the deal value Newcrest at Australian $31.16, which is about a 39% premium to where Newcrest was trading prior to the receipt of the first bid on the 6th of February. GQG, a listed fund manager in Australia who managed global equities, released an update highlighting the fund grew to US $94.5 billion from $91 billion a month earlier. Finally, Whitehaven Coal released a quarterly update and downgraded guidance across the board. Production is expected to be 5.5% below, managed coal sales to be 9% below, equity coal sales to be 8% below, and unit cost of coal to be 5% higher than prior assumptions. This was due to a range of factors, but predominantly due to labour shortages and operational issues at one of their mines. They do still have $2.7 billion of net cash on hand, which equates to 44% of their market cap. Turning to the week ahead, on the economic front, it's relatively quiet. On Thursday, New Zealand's inflation data is to be released, with the market expecting a 1.8% quarterly increase in prices, an acceleration of the 1.4% experience in the December quarter, This would take annual inflation to 7.2%. Japanese inflation is also released this week, with the market expecting 3.1% core annual inflation. US earnings season continues to ramp up, and we will monitor company commentary closely to determine how different sectors are faring. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.